so um, we're going to have a discussion, also open for your questions. Please, all the uh, Andre, and also I would like to ask Jan and Kevin to join us from Magnolia and from Bricks IT Solution. Yes, it is Kevin. Hello. <laughs> Ah, yeah. Hello. Oh. <laughs> okay. So this is uh, your time, <laughs> and also to intervene. Questions? Uh, maybe I start a little bit um, with uh, the question that we have not touched. I just, if you all, IT programming or whatever. I mean, I heard that this is actually it could be that the programming, the coding, actually could be slowly, <laughs> uh, you know, um, uh, could sl slowly, how do you say, uh, um, um, quit the job. I, I mean, I'm, I'm basically a writer, so I know what that means for me. I think graphic designers are very uh, conscious of what happens here, etc. So how about coding, programming? Do you think this is, this is going to be a bit dangerous? Maybe, Kevin. We start with you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I don't think it's dangerous because it's uh, like we saw in presentations also, it supports you and helps you, but uh, it's not as far as uh, it does your job or replace your job. And But uh, as also, I saw examples in the medical business, they can help to analyze and pre do like write tags or show marks, but uh, at the end, the doctor has to make the decision what it is. Yeah. But as for, for, for program, does it help? I mean, can you program with chat GTP? I mean, I heard about that. Let's, let's yeah. ask the audience. Who, yeah. who is programming on a regular basis and has never used uh, chat GPT for it? Every programmer so far. <laughs> program who is a programmer? But I think it's, really, it's just very helpful. Absolutely. Also experience the productivity boost is tremendous. I feel really Also, given on how young it is, and also seeing on all the tricks of the trade, something that we heard, you can just nowadays really feed in your own code base, and suddenly it's really a complete different beast. Also, what you heard with just automatically migrating code bases from my case, FreeMarker to Next.js, it's just that's not 2x, that's 10x faster than doing it on So, so that's the clearly is something happening. So, the, the uh, digital industry for the first time disrupts itself, right? <laughs> I don't know if it's the first time we can argue about that. But <laughs> yeah, but I think it will be killing a lot of for programming. Like you will just be so much more productive that you just don't need a lot of boilerplate. And I mean, this is this is just beginning. So and it's already so useful. I mean, it's if you give it up. I mean, you, you still now you still need to be a programmer. I think to write it the correct prompt, you you have to kind of know what programming is to really ask. The mm -hmm. correct way. You cannot just type, write me a program that does X. Maybe, but I <coughs> won't have any idea. But like now, it, it's super productive, and and I actually also think it's kind of awesome that it's coming after our our, our comfortable guys that sit in our <laughs> air conditioned <laughs> controlled uh, offices, and the, the guys who do the real work on the streets on construction sites, they're kind of safe for yeah. now. So <laughs> I, think, I think I think it's cool. Yeah. And, and and it's it, it's gonna liberate a lot of smart people to from the, whatever work they're doing now. I don't think they'll be out of work. It'll be just different work. Yeah. They'll have time to think about other interesting yeah. things. And uh, but it's it's I'm I'm pretty excited about. Well, I, I remember when the the first graphic design programs came back in the eighties. Graphic design, I think they're out of, mm. out of business, but it never happened. Yes, Marcel, maybe. Yes, yeah. uh, I'm a software de developer as well uh, for a lot of years <laughs> and I have just experienced that uh, the amount of complexity that you're coping with every day is getting more and more and if you wouldn't have Google to help you out you wouldn't find a solution to the problem so Google is kind of a door opener for more complexity and at the end of the day it happens that you copy and paste some code examples but you do not really understand and you have no time to understand it so you just use it <laughs> it works and you go with it and the amount of things that you really understand about the code that you, you are the author is kind of getting less and less of the 
actual complexity of what you have generated. So you generate something which is not, you know, kind of your your work. It's already it has like foreign code in it a lot, and it's getting more and more, and you kind of get far away from what you're actually doing. It's not your product at the end of the day, and will I think it will be a jump in that direction that we have more and more complex systems that we think we are the author of, but we are not. We just kind of uh, jungle the balls, but the result is something which we are not uh, actually the engineers of. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jumping in as the only non-programmer here, I, I offer an op uh, a non-expert opinion on your favorite topic. Now, uh, if, if you look at this from a different perspective, from economics maybe, uh, there's something called Gibbons paradox. I was a, an economist uh, in England during the Industrial Revolution, and uh, they said, okay, look, if we get the steam engine to be more efficient, we can, we need less coal. And the steam engines got ever more efficient, but they needed more and more and more coal. <laughs> so um, if you have more of a resource, you will use more of a resource, unless there's something that kind of limits your access to this. So what, what might happen also is I would call it broaden and cheapen. <laughs> uh, it means the labor will get cheaper, but everybody will have to do more easy stuff. And you know, in the end, you'll have to, I can call myself a programmer, right? <laughs> That's my Python code, right? <laughs> yeah, but it, it's, I mean, it's the same argument that that you have in any other industry, like a, ask a mechanic, a, a car mechanic from like the 50s, right? They were putting in all the screws and everything and nowadays they change all the <laughs> chips and, and like, or a whole tire or whatever, a whole motor block. It's like the same thing, they're still, they're still mechanics, they just do different things. It's like a, you don't put in every screw yourself, it's kind of a more modularized thing. Oh, but but the, the, sorry, that comes a little bit to Marcel's question, right? Yes, do they actually know what they do when they change yeah. just the module? Well, maybe they don't, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, cars, yeah, cars get saved. Wasn't that your question? Right? Yeah, that's ex yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. At the end of the day, you Good make example. decisions and you trust the machine. Yeah, 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 because yeah, yeah. you don't know what the machine is doing, but yeah. you think it's, it's wiser than me anyway, so mm. it knows everything. So yeah. I trust the machine, I do decisions, and I should be the master and not trust always the machine. So you're already a reverse centaur. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But but Ursin was. I think I think he no. wasn't quite uh, d'accord of the. With no, no, I'm t I totally agree with you. Oh, you totally I'm agree. I'm not yeah. sure if it's a bad thing because mm. I mean I yeah. don't know what the compiler does with my C sharp code. Mm. Let's say you know, so I don't care. Um, but I think an important. Uh, do we still need like um, cheap labor, let's say in India or so, or is the new shoring offshoring thing over? I think this is really yes. an interesting mm. question. You, you mean specifically in the programming? Yeah, in the yeah, programming yeah, only, yeah, sorry, yeah. because okay, it's yeah. just it's just like, mm. I mean, when you when you specify that mm -hmm. exactly, most probably soon a model can also produce mm. it. Yeah, that was always a big problem with outsourcing quite often. I mean, if I want to have <coughs> a million pairs of Nikes, it's quite easy to just specify it once, I get stuff back super cheap. Software, it's really a completely different game because I have to put in a lot of work for as, uh, actually specifying that stuff, and then there's always human error involved, different languages, and so on. It's really difficult. Mm. So the process can be done much better with uh, GPT, I would say. Because quite often it was really like you have to be so specific in, yeah, in your spec that you hand over, and the end you could almost write it by yourself. Mm. <laughs> this will be done by the machine, I think. I also think that this will change the way we do process automation on a low level, because it's kind of, you can do it yourself now, or you can yeah. almost do it yourself, and I think a lot of processes will now be automated, because it's a lot cheaper to achieve, not, not the deep software and deep engineering stuff, but the, the easy one, and I think that's, that's a huge, that's a huge thing, I think we'll see progress there. So, 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 so Kevin, for, for a typical, or also uh, Tomaso, for a typical Swiss-based, Swiss-made Swiss -made software kind of, Environment is that a good is that a good thing? <laughs> Honestly, personally, I use Copilot, mm -hmm. which ChatGPT mm -hmm. at the end, mm -hmm. and I got I would say fifty percent more productive easily. Mm -hmm. So the question is, uh, will be more job be created <laughs> 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 or, or what? Because it's true that it's not going to replace us, but on the other end, uh, you need less people now. That's that's clear. Mm -hmm. So also which is a bottleneck in the industry actually having enough people to yeah, yeah. program. 
So this could be actually very positive for the industry. That's true, yeah. yeah. There's also a legal problem. Sorry if I jump in again here. But um, anybody remember Android? Anybody know one third of this was actually programmed in Switzerland? All the, um, the core libraries were done by NOSA Engineering in Winterthur in the first release, of course. And uh, anybody remember the lawsuit? Because, um, well, who was it? Uh, I think Adobe found some code snippets that the programmers had, you know, <laughs> copy pasted <laughs> into this new system. And of course, you guys get more productive. That's one thing. On the other hand, what if your private productivity uh, jump results in more legal action? <laughs> but like, oh, this is definitely not yours. This is not yours. Now pay me. You have to hire more lawyers then. Yes. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe <laughs> stop being a programmer and become a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what's actually the job of the developer? It's about like uh, logical thinking, about like working to create something. And um, one job is also um, to the documentate uh, thing. And what's one thing that uh, yeah developer don't like so much? And here uh, they uh, spend a lot of time to document the code or the program, what they don't like, and they spend a lot of time. And here, there, I think, is uh, really ChatGPT uh, or any other uh, software can help a lot uh, to spend time to concentrate and focus on the logical things and create stuff and not on, like, uh, administrator creating the stuff and we make documentations and uh, there it, it's it's release a little bit the pain of the developer. I mm -hmm. Now he, do he documented by writing to ChatGPT, yeah. and then he gets the document. <laughs> 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 it's, it's like document this and then you have the documentation and everything is happy. This is ha happy, the developer is happy, so. Yeah. <laughs> Question is, is the code better quality or less good quality than you know? Because the most time spent is actually debugging application, maintaining application. So if you generate code which is unreadable, I mean you will spend a lot more time after. Yeah. So is the code produced better quality or so I mean the mm -hmm. what I do quite often is sometimes stuff that I wrote four years ago and got really hard expanded code to me, but suddenly everything is really better, uh, extremely well documented. So it's getting better. It's definitely better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> also mine <yes. laughs> but I mean in the end it's produced by all the large code base. I mean learns from the large code bases out there. If you curate mm -hmm. them a bit more, so maybe don't take in some projects, um, <laughs> then <laughs> it's even better. The funny thing, uh, connecting to lawsuit, that if you're going about it, now Microsoft has a bit of the, the monopoly on it, right? Compilers is on Microsoft now. And this thing has been trained on uh, Linux, on open open source uh, stuff <laughs> that was programmed by people that hate Microsoft. That's why it's lawsuit saying exactly for that. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, I would like to have your opinion. Uh, first, maybe I need to explain a few things. Uh, most of I, I'm sure most of you uh, is Swiss already. So uh, <coughs> we, we we know that Microsoft has informed the uh, public that they will integrate uh, GPT into the Microsoft products. But actually, we know that it is already working there. Uh, years ago, uh, Argentina government and Microsoft made a deal uh, so <coughs> that Microsoft would inform the government about the young girls who would have a high uh, probability to be pregnant within six months. In Switzerland, in the primary schools, uh, I think during the third, third class or second even, uh, kids, uh, all the students, uh, get a Microsoft uh, laptop, uh, which is like a smartphone, both sides say cameras <coughs> and everything. And all they, all also the kids have a proper uh, mail account with the first name and the family name. Uh, provided by the Basel leaders. So, uh, <laughs> from the age of, let's say, 10, our, your children are already uh, recorded well in the uh, database, pro and the data is being 
processed by the use <coughs> of uh, AI. And uh, okay, I can go and go on, go on <laughs> for hours about this because this is my topic, security and privacy. What do you think, guys? This is your country. And your <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but what is changing in your opinion? Because I mean, we do that for a long time. You know, we use TikTok and we, we give them all the data and we start very early and we let our kids do it. I, I don't see that there is a big change in that. I mean, I totally agree with you. It's not a good thing that we are so careless with this. Yes, but you are right. Yes, but so but I'm not seeing that there is a tipping point in that. Yeah, we have been using all these kind of stuff uh, as grown ups, but nowadays the target is the children. But and I mean, it was so for a while, no? I mean, I don't, I don't see the connection to, to the, the whole uh, I mean, AI surveillance system. will probably become more efficient, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of big problems. Let's see, like, super targeted attacks, but on scale, like spear phishing on scale, use, using GPT-4 and so on. I totally see a lot of, 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 like, scenarios. But this scenario, I'm not sure it changed so much with the new technology. I, I'm, I might it be wrong. changes because this is a huge improvement, development, within the public. Below the technical people, so it's going more public and public. Okay, so the point is, hey, maybe it is your responsibility to give a shot and make, maybe make a wake-up call. Okay, mm -hmm. if it goes like this, you, it is not like a TikTok thing. It's gonna be more mm -hmm. than that. I mean, there was the interesting thing like a few weeks ago where they wanted to stop the development for six months, but I mean, this just, uh, first of all, we don't want to question who asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> I think more important is now that it's out, it's, it's, it's game theory, no one will stop this ever, because mm. it cannot stop while the others are continuing mm. it. So, while I agree that it is not always just good to do this without thinking too much about it, I don't see that we can do anything right now. But, but how about your clients? How about you, let's say, how are yeah. they aware? How, I mean, are they comfortable no, with... But uh, how about the education uh, in, in a parallel way? Okay. Of course, make sure that everybody uses these kind of products, but by being aware of the danger so that they can take some prevention. Mm -hmm. Something like even a piece of tape mm -hmm. and cover the key camera something like not using your real name while using these kind of platforms. Something like hey, mm -hmm. provide all your insurance, health insurance data to the companies like who are, who are going through everything so that in 10 years when you, when you get sick, when you, when you want to have a different uh, insurance policy, uh, you wouldn't get. Uh, I, mean, I don't totally agree with you on that. Uh, okay. I mean, I think uh, it's all yeah. here. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, just it's, it's about it's like the velocity of the laws and the uh, velocity of the technique. And the technique is has not really boundaries, and then the technique is developed. Then after that, uh, the, the government <coughs> comes, and then they have to say, "Oh, this new technology, uh, we have to build up the law." Laws, like uh, driving cars as well. The, 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 the laws has been developed and they are so slow and they um, yeah, break down a little bit the development of the technology. But in some other points, like data of, um, privacy, uh, there is like now in, in the Swiss, we are like also a bit um, later than like the EU with the GDPR, but now we are uh, going also this step and, uh, to save the data from the public persons and uh, it's coming in the first of september mm -hmm. yeah, i'm sorry if i jump in here again i disagree and i don't mean this personally i think there's a very easy way we can deal with this and this is skin in the game if you build something that hurts a lot of people you go to jail we take all your money <laughs> i'm pretty sure we'll see results very fast <laughs> but if you can make money with hurting other people there is a lot of people who mm -hmm. would that do this <laughs> yeah that, that might be true but still they all go to jail I think that's if there is no law against it. <laughs> Again, you just um, you punish the result, not the method. Mm -hmm. So if I, you know, if I hit you over the head with a crowbar, I go to jail, right? Yeah. If I run you over with the car, I go to jail. It doesn't matter what if I do a use a car or a crowbar, I'm in your bed. But if you steal data and there is no law against it, you don't go to jail. Mm. 
like I said, you can say it's not allowed. If I catch yeah. you with the wrong data, you go to jail. Yeah, but, 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 but it's also it's also kind of <coughs> more tricky to like specify what like like your data can be used to do good or harm. Like let's say someone spies on your medical data, like they record your click speed on Facebook, and mm -hmm. then they realize your clicks get slower over the last two years, so you got dementia or whatever. <laughs> and you could use this for good, right? You could, yes. If you sell this to your personal doctor, <laughs> he might be happy, or to you. Mm -hmm. But if you sell this to the insurance company that they cranks up your <laughs> insurance um, policy, then it's a bad thing. So to be able it, to do it's that, a little you bit. need to anonymize the data. Which company is doing that? Or you could say opt-in. I want all the people to use the data to do me good. That's fine. I don't trust nobody. No, you can't have my data. I mean, this is pretty simple. It was a bit, but it Italy is now mm -hmm. uh, stopping them for because mm -hmm. you just use all data. You don't ask people. To yeah, I mean that's the point. You know, yeah. you make money of the data you've stolen. Yeah. You could say, look, guys, this doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at Microsoft, what's their uh, profit margin? Thirty percent. You can just increase your tax. You pay ten percent because we know you stole most of it. <laughs> You know, it, 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 okay, it, everybody it, thinks it, it, this is like fancy, and we can't do that. But uh, in the end, if you look at the, all the great changes that have happened, nobody said these would happen. So everything stays the same until it changes. And you have to kind of open your mind to the possibility. I'm, I'm all for this. I mean, I would love to have this happen. I just <laughs> don't think it's... Yeah, I mean, yeah, it didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't happen. <laughs> but but well, is there a change in... in it? Your clients, the companies, are they aware of these yeah. problems? I mean, I, I agree that education is very important, and I also am with you. But I would be curious to know, uh, you know, are I the mean, companies we, cool to send everything to to, to Microsoft? I'm surprised to how some of them are, and even yeah, like yeah. data, which I thought I don't want this data to go outside of Switzerland. So we have some, mm -hmm. and and it's not even that they're naive. I think some of them really back it up with, the, with their with the truth about them, so they just mm -hmm. have to know what they do. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot more cases possible. I think banks, they used to hide a little bit behind the Cloud Act for a while, so mm -hmm. they were a bit like holding back, but I think also they uh, get easier and easier with this. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually surprised what they are willing to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, uh, mm -hmm. Can you guys give us, I'm sorry, I was just gonna say, can you, just following on, but a little bit of a different thing, can you guys give us a bit of an overview of what countries, the, 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 the kind of geo, uh, camera angle of this. Who does this well? Like, who is more advanced than others? What are the trends between countries? Obviously, China has come up and basically said, um, you know, anyone who's foreign uh, company, like, who's transferring data outside of China, is not going to be, um, you know, is not going to be punished, and so on. So, can somebody give me a bit of an overview on how this works across the globe? What are the trends? In, in terms of AI in general? Or no, in, in terms of data protection. So uh, ah. like <laughs> we, were, we were talking about data protection, we were talking about sending data, we were talking yeah. about monetizing data, going to prison. Yeah, well, I mean, there's Europe, obviously, with the GDPR, I guess it's kind of tight, at least on making sure that not that you're not uh, followed from Facebook everywhere unless you really opt in. Um, the US, as far as I'm aware, is still a little bit like everything goes, but as it goes there, there are some kind of ideas or some kind of regulations coming, maybe. Well, China is a very different beast, obviously. Um, there's everything is uh, ruled by the, uh, um, by the government, exactly. And I mean, it's, at least from my point of view, what I would describe as a dystopia where you can basically be assured that everything that you do in the web is actually reported and is going to decrease your social score and yeah. if you're not a nice citizen, no more train rides, no more whatever. So yeah, it's really kind of a bit of divided at the moment. Do you guys think that GDPR is actually effective? Like, I just think 99% <laughs> of people just... That you like you to you I just, I just want to get through it. I'm just going to accept, 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 right? Sure, but there are also solutions like, for example, Brave, and it will just automatically decline, and that's it. So. But that, that's a bit the, the, the issue that I think. Like, we all complain about privacy. We all say, ah, oh, it's important, but then uh, yeah, yeah, we go to YouTube, we will be corrected. There are many other options. Like, you could use uh, other, uh, instead of using Gmail, use something else. You don't use Teams from Microsoft anymore. Just, we don't care at the end. 
honestly like yeah yeah mm -hmm. i think yeah, i think that's the yeah. most important thing no one really cares really about cares. Yeah. except very few people. yeah well if everyone cares a lot it's impossible that someone is going to look at their email at my email and say it won't happen ever oh it's free it has a yeah. new nice ui and ah whatever here we go so it's, mm -hmm. it's really complicated the, the question is can it be used as a weapon and will it be used as a weapon it's if a it's a weapon and it will be used as a weapon as every modern technology has sooner or later be used as a weapon and we will find out but it's really frightening to think of what kind of weapon that would be because you can really control other people and whole uh, nations with this weapon because they depend on foreign intelligence it's a perfect weapon from many, many different angles. I mean, that mobile phone is a perfect bug. It basically captures everything where you go, your contacts, everything, and that's stored forever. And of course, on a large scale, I think um, a lot of the trouble, especially in the West, we see at the moment that we have so many different factions, no one can agree on anything that is largely fueled by social media. And you can also scale the discourse in any direction that can be clearly used. In I mean, maybe also to add, I mean, now we talk about GPT-4 and so on, but I mean, this, this cat is out of the box so soon, everyone will have these models. I mean, um, Facebook kind of leaked out their 65 billion parameter model, which is apparently quite good. Then afterwards, there was a huge rush in the community to build on top of that, um, and then that was just the beginning. And so there's a lot of open source already out, which is also, I think it's good, but we just need to be aware that what GPT-4 can do right now in half a year, this will be available to any, let's say, large, larger group with a bit of financial resources. So they can do whatever they want. I think the uh, the, um, the Facebook model, they made they managed to make it run on the laptop already. So and <laughs> on a Raspberry Pi. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but only the small ones. But yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. totally, uh, totally agree. So yeah. we just need to be aware that what we see now and then surprises us will be available to to bigger groups with a bit of financial capacity in like half a year and maybe to everyone in two years. So. I think the idea of like large scale attacks um, with using all kind of information of you in the internet uh, with perfect spear phishing approach, this will just be the norm. So we need to be aware that this is coming for sure. Yeah. So this is a cyber security issue? So yeah, yeah, but I mean in the end it's just someone is talking to you or sending you mails and it sounds super legit and they use all the information they found about you in the, in the, in the web and you can already do that right now mm -hmm. but it needs humans <laughs> to do it. And in the future, it will be like fully automated on scale. So, but then you extrapolate that, like, how do we then stop tax and banks stealing your money? Like, it doesn't stop at information. It stop. It, it's it, it's very scary. Yeah, I mean, the, the banks try with the KYC process. Now, I mean, they try to figure out who is allowed to do something. Um, I don't really know what we can do in general to stop this kind of attacks. But I mean, it's also. Uh, cat and mouse game, so we will figure out. Uh, we will also use these models again to protect. Uh, yeah, I honestly don't know it. <laughs> Maybe someone else. The technology itself is not a problem, it's a good thing. The problem is who's dominating, who's ruling this uh, domain. Hmm. So I just did my job okay, because of a cup call. And <laughs> 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 Yeah, I mean, th this would be are, also... You are, are good guys, you are good technological-wise <laughs> and human-wise, and in Basel, I'm sure you are, you know, you have some roles, okay? But don't forget your role as a human being, as a father, <laughs> as a mother as well. Yes, that would also a little bit be my last question around to you. Um, what does this mean, actually, for Basel, for, for Swiss-made software, for our industry, right? Because it's, it's going to be, again, like three, the three big guys over there <laughs> dictating everything, or is there just a possibility that there is a, you know... I mean, I understand it's also about scale. I'm happy to learn that you can even do great stuff with a small scale, <laughs> as I, I learned, yes? So I would like to know a little bit more about that. So, so what could be done, or what could be... What does that mean for, for an industry? I, I learned that, okay, you can program faster using those tools, which could be good. We can, we can do more software here, we can grow here. But what does it, does, what does it mean on a, in a long term, bigger scale? Maybe each one of you, and then <laughs> what, do, what do you think? Well, for us, it's more a supporting tool, uh, like you said, that we can 
make um, better, faster services uh, or offer the services. So we also using like uh, Azure services or um, face recognition or something like that and other tools. Uh, so we still um, just jump on the, the hype also mm -hmm. somehow and also deliver our customer that what what they want so mm -hmm. in our Situation. Yeah, but, but the problem is a little bit, if, if it's a word processing writing, I, I, I could say I don't care. But as we heard, as we go into this, you know, it goes deeper into who we are, how we think, etc. And then you rely on somebody else <laughs> that controls. Using like uh, yeah. uh, something similar like GPT, yeah. but it's not like that she doesn't have to um, do nothing anymore. Yeah, she yeah. has to write smaller text yeah, yeah. and uh, lecture after it and to rewrite it a little bit and then make it nice. Mm. But it helps her to uh, do a lot more and yeah. articles is even more efficient. I think it will enable a lot of creative people to produce stuff. Mm -hmm. It will shift a little bit from like technical people that, that you have to program, but it's 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 gonna yeah. allow. But you don't really have a problem that then we rely on a couple of big tech pros. I'm not sure this will happen. There's a huge effort in okay. in, in research groups to democratize okay. this. Yeah, There's yeah. also um, the, the the open assistant project, mm -hmm. which is also the Yannick yeah. from from Zurich who's mm -hmm. involved. I don't know okay. if the founder is he German yeah. or Swiss. I don't know. But there's and as I said, it took like a few weeks from going to these hundreds of millions of costs to train a model to mm -hmm. something that is comparable for under a thousand mm -hmm. mm -hmm. dollars. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's really just the beginning and, and I mean obviously there will always be the guys with the real money with the mm. heavy hitting scientists who are <laughs> top of the game who, who can do stuff that other people cannot do but I think for most of the stuff there's no danger of not of, of like depending too much on these on these players because it will just naturally evolve I mean. Mm -hmm. It's mm. like like any other like any other technology or uh, keeping a monopoly on, on technologies I think super hard. Okay. And to be fair, I mean we already right now rely on the on the, on the few tech pros in the US. Of course, now. yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah, our yeah. cloud infrastructure is basically. Uh, it's US just a question if strategically we have to uh, yeah, change yeah. this, yeah. you know. Uh, I th yeah, yeah, I think it will happen in a small. Uh, sm I mean, I also agree there will be open source models. We saw it very nicely with generative uh, art. I mean, there, stable diffusion really made a, a, an impact and mm -hmm. made a difference. I mean, Midjourney is not the DALL-E model uh, mm -hmm. by OpenAI, which is closed, but it's an improvement of the stable diffusion model, which is open source. So I think in general, the open source process is always better, um, <coughs> even if it's something scary like a large model. Um, I, I basically agree with you in the way that I don't think we are like, I mean, everyone is throwing around right now this word AI and even AGI and like, uh, you know, I don't think that's it. I think we just created a very nice tool and it will become even more powerful, but I don't see yet that we are in real danger of like super intelligence. It's always hard to say, but it, it, it doesn't feel yeah, like... I was <laughs> like thinking about this, this is a kind of a, a room, I live in the mountains, in, uh, in, uh, I live in the Balkan region, so I have uh, some walks in the night, and I was ruminating about this fact, that as, as humans, we always thought like the human brain as the kind of, uh, the, the thing that was making the difference as, as compared to uh, the animals. Now it seems like this tool can do tasks that require some cognitive uh, attention, but yet it does not have emotions and stuff like that. And then I was thinking, but maybe like what contradistinguishes us as a human is not really our intelligence, but it's the rest of the emotion. Because uh, if you think about it, like uh, in order to, to the human being to be kind of evolved from monkeys, whatever, if you look at much uh, at the fraction of time, life was on Earth is like last minute of the last uh, second, right? I mean, maybe we got there with the, this thing. Maybe in five years, whatever, we're gonna get there. But the last, the last of uh, what contradistinguishes us, like having like uh, our uh, body and emotion and stuff like that, they really required billions of years to be evolved. I think we're still far away there. <laughs> yes, I mean the singularity moment. I think Kurzweil just postponed it to 2014. Once so again. <laughs> once again, yeah. I think it was once it was actually around 25. So. Uh, for people has been longer in this scene. Yeah, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> so he postponed well, it again from 30 to 40. Yeah, that's what I just read before coming here. Uh, I asked ChatGPT, <laughs> so... <laughs> 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 so... Also, like, the founder of, uh, of uh, artificial intelligence research 
said like the AGI, they they were like like in the 50s, 60s. Say it's going to be the 80s. It's going to be the 90s. You know, it had. It, there were all kinds of predictions of that. You know, we could, we could make a book of, you know, all the predictions of the end of the world, the singularity. You know, that didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. And uh, ma maybe a final point is, um, I think, w one effect of this whole is is kind of to make obvious to a lot of people how low the general level for many things is. <laughs> Um, it to just give you a real world example, I mean, everybody in here is in the tech industry. Everybody has tried ChatGPT for something. Okay, let me tell you another group of people who've tried ChatGPT. Everybody, everybody from sixth grade up who didn't want to write the paper for the teacher, <laughs> because I had that with my son in his class. Like, hey, you tried this ChatGPT thing, you know? <laughs> and um, what also happened to have a friend of mine. He's a very smart guy. He said, hey, you know, my son, he had like this assignment from school. And he was asked to, to do a short movie about the fall of the Berlin Wall. And he said, like, ChatGPT, write me a script. And he did. So this is massively interesting. And blah, blah. I said, you know, the level is just very low. Yeah? <laughs> because if, if you look at the stuff that the kids produce from an adult level, you see how, if you, if you have kids, you know, and you help them in school, they do some stuff that and you see they are really struggling. And for you, it's like, God, this is stupid, you know. <laughs> but you can't really let them know because you can't discourage them. So that's one part. Number, number two is um, everyone in this room is an expert in something, okay? Now you go in the general media and you read an article about your field of expertise and it's crap. <laughs> it really is, you know? And then uh, uh, um, ChatGPT produces something that's so much based on, whoa, no, the level is just very low. <laughs> this is also sort of perspective. I mean, all, every one of these perspectives is completely valid. All of this will happen at the same time. But, you know, maybe the, the, in the mix of it all, there will be some emergent phenomenon, <laughs> like a few years down the road. <laughs> maybe not intelligence, but... <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys think will be the next big thing? Like now, considering language is 80% solved or something like this? What's the next thing? Language is already a uh, super big thing, because a lot of the jobs that we have today are totally based on language to fill some processes and whatnot. And actually, to enable ChatGPT to do things that uh, require quite a bit of expert knowledge, <coughs> are surprisingly easy mm -hmm. by just applying a quick trick. I mean, you heard in one of those presentations before. And all you need is just a vector database, dump your information in, and all of a sudden it's not broad and you can really validate in your um, in your field that that stuff is really rock solid. And typically, you need like one or two years to really get there on that scale. And basically, <coughs> at least in a Jupyter notebook, that's seven lines of long chain and with that you can really <laughs> um, affect a lot of jobs. So well, I guess this is going to be something that we're going to do in the workforce quite a bit in the upcoming years. And do you feel like there will be huge gains to, to I don't know, I mean just one example. I was just hey I'm going to replace myself and well Magnolia is a DXP platform, there's a lot of complex different systems involved and there's a lot of technology that you have to know. And you get RFPs and those RFPs have a lot of questions that you have to manually somehow answer and you have to invest a while to really know it all. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean from the level of, from the quality of, of, That's of the stuff. That's the quality. You get I, when I had my training set, because I got all the old RFPs, I just dumped them, I cleaned mm -hmm. them, I trained on it, and it was awful, horrible. Okay, cool. Then I started to clean that stuff quite a bit, and then suddenly Magnolia was not registered on the stock exchange and all the stuff anymore, but it was getting to a kind of precise level, but maybe at 60% it was good. Okay, suddenly there was Langchain. I just took all the documentation that we have, chew on it. I just took on top of this all the old RFP data, <laughs> and now that thing is as good as I am. It's, it's so funny, we did exactly the same for our RFPs. So <laughs> everyone will do that apparently now. Well, so can forget so RFPs. Fast, yeah. <laughs> it was just one example. Really. You can just take PDFs, HTML files, it doesn't matter what it is, and all of a sudden it's not fascinating. As we really saw in this presentation, it's just going to pick up the right bits and it's going to be on a very high level. Basically. Oh. Look, at this okay. case, my prediction for those kind of jobs, it's going to change quite a bit. For sure. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Yes, I think uh, thank you for, for listening. Yeah.